Hello everybody, welcome back to Off Meta Musings. I'm Itan, and today we will be talking about reactions. I'm back myself from my third place win at Warhammer World last week, where I took a Ossiarch Bone Reapers list based around the principles of reaction control. So this time around, I'm going to be going over what it was about, how it's played, and how you can list build to take advantage of damaging reactions in your games of Warcry. So without further ado, let's get going. We're going to do a quick refresher course on reactions. Effectively, reactions are things a fighter can do during an enemy fighter's activation. There are three universal reactions, counter, take cover, and strike them down, as you can see here. And each reaction says exactly when it can be used and how it can be used. I believe that reactions are an often overlooked mechanic in Warcry, because most of the time they're not really better than the one action that you're giving up for them for your fighter and your fighter in order to use them has to have action spare which means they're most likely not activated yet so because of this they only really see play in the event that you're almost 100% sure your character is going to die in that one attack um uh, really with the exception of the very high impact reactions. So we're talking about things like Gloomspike Gits, which trades an action on one of your fighters for three additional actions on your other better fighters. But what I learned and what I list built for during this event was that you can use the threat of damage from your reactions to add pressure onto your opponent and force them into making moves that they might not would otherwise make, especially with their weaker units. This is where the really where the idea of reaction control comes in. So to use your large amount of activations and damaging reactions specifically to force opponents into wasting their actions and making suboptimal moves during your game. So with that in mind, when looking to take advantage of this, there are, there are effectively a bunch of requirements. The reaction damage, so if we're looking at what the reaction is going to do, it has to either be similar to just attacking normally or give better odds to hit. As 99% of the time, you want to be killing enemy fighters. If you're engaged with one, realistically, you want to kill it or try and kill it if you're if you're going down that route. And an example of this might be counter if you have toughness five, but your the damage on your fighters sufficiently low that doing counter would do more damage anyway than your normal attack. So because of this, we're going to be looking at poor fighters offensively, but fighters also with passable defense. And this is going to be a theme that we're going to explore when we take a look at the various reactions, is that most of them require your opponent to either miss or for them to do something that doesn't work. So ideally, you want to be increasing the chances of them missing their attacks as much as possible whilst trying to keep alive yourself. So this really necessitates the use of chaff fighters. So we're talking about things that are, I would say, around 70 points or less. But one thing that is interesting to mention is that you don't necessarily have to fill your entire warband with this, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do any damage at all. But I think a core of five to seven fighters, you know, to flood the board, to kind of get in the way, to really force your opponent to do suboptimal moves would be a good idea. And with a couple of elite, more elite units to really, really do the damage. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over a bunch of different reactions from each of the Grand Alliances, see what they do and why they might work in this situation. So we'll start off with Chaos. Uh, Demons of Corn have Corn's Dew, and not just Demons of Corn, Corn Mortals as well. So the interesting thing about Corn's Dew is that when you're targeted, but before any dice are rolled or the damage goes through, if your opponent misses, you get to allocate two points of damage to that opponent. But if they crit you, you take extra damage. So like counter, it gets better the more toughness you have. So if the opponent is wounding on threes, um, the chances of corns you doing damage is going to be one third. If they're wounding on fours, it's going to be 50%. And if they're wounding on fives, it's going to be two thirds or 66% chance of corns you actually hitting. Now there aren't any cheap enough basic infantry with good defense in corn to use it. I think your best defense is four on your basic dudes. So your best bet would probably be blood reavers as when they're wounding on fives because they only have strength three um, the corn's dew will do better damage on average than their basic one three one three attack. Going into slanesh we have shared pain. So if they're targeted, for each hit roll that hits, you do one damage back. And if your opponent crits, you do two damage. So it's common to all Slanesh units and the Unmade and Sands of the Flame also. It gets better the less toughness that you have. So your opponent is wounding on threes, it'll 
two thirds of the time it'll hit, etc. Now, I think for the purposes of this video, we're not going to be looking at things like shared pain because it really requires your opponent to be hitting a lot of times. And if they're hitting you, it's likely that they'll kill you. And we want to try and mitigate that as much as we want through our game of Warcry. So we won't really be focusing on that all that much. What else have we got? So we have Vicious Repost going into the next one. So this is common to Splintered Fang and the Tarantulos Brood. I actually have a, have a, it's not a similar ability, it's the same ability. And it's a flat 33% chance to trigger on every enemy attack for two damage. So for that, if we take a look at Splintered Fang, what have they got? They've got Clear Bloods with Shields, which are Toughness 4, which is good. It'll keep, it'll keep them alive for a little bit longer. But they don't have a great damage profile, but they're sitting at 65 points per model. So that might be something interesting where you could run a bunch of Clear Bloods, go into your opponents or have your opponents run into you, do a lot of Vicious Repost, and if they start missing, they're going to be doing more damage back to them than counter because it's a flat 2 damage. And eventually all those little 2 damages will start to add up. Which is, which is a pretty neat pretty neat idea, I think. Going into the last one here, we've got Spire Tyrants. They have Gladiatorial Display. Now, Gladiatorial Display is a bit strange. It gets worse the more attacks are being used. So you never really want to use it when more than three attacks are coming in against you. You can see here, if your opponent is hitting you with three attacks, it has a 58% chance to proc. Now, Gladiatorial Display requires your opponent to not crit in order to do the four damage so what you could do is for example run a lot of pit fighters which are only 65 points and have poor damage and against your opponents that have up to three attacks it might be a good idea you could have them run into you you could display away and hopefully do four damage back to your opponent and there's actually there's, there's a pretty good chance of you doing that at 58 percent because at 58 percent chance of your opponent not critting they only have a 42 percent chance to actually crit you so yeah i think Pit Fighters would be a good way to go. Wild Blood from the Rotmire Creed, that only has an 11% chance to actually pop, so it's not all that fantastic. Similarly with Breath of Cinder and Smoke off of the Horns of Hashut, it really relies on your opponent having a poor toughness in order to do that damage with the reaction, so it's not something that I would necessarily recommend building an entire warband, a warband around. Going into Death and Destruction, there aren't all that many interesting damaging reactions here. The interesting ones being Ossiak Bone Reapers, they have Deathly Prowess. So a fighter can make this reaction after they've been targeted but before the hit rolls are made. And if everyone misses, you allocate 5 damage points to the attacking fighter. So it's kind of like counter. It gets better the more toughness you have. Because, of course, if your opponent wounding is not wounding you on threes, it's only a third chance to pop. If your opponent's wounding on fours, it's 50%. And if they're wounding on fives, you have a pretty good 66% chance. But it gets worse the more attacks your opponent is, is throwing at you. So you can see from this table here, if your opponent is hitting you with three attacks, the chances of all of them missing, especially if they are wounding you on fives, which is what you're going to be trying to orchestrate, is only around about 29%. But, I mean, I'll take a 30% chance almost to do 5 damage back to your opponent for the Ossiak Bone Reaper base damage, which is pretty poor. It's like 1-3 it's like <laughs> on, on their basic troops. So it's likely that that 5 damage is going to be more damage you're going to be putting through than just attacking. Um, on destruction side of things, we have Gobapalooza. They've got Spiteful Demise, so if they die, they explode, do a bunch of damage. Again, not really something you want to properly build a warband around because it relies on your guys dying and then you roll a dice and then you might do damage. Ogre Moor Tribes, they've got Quick Bite. Now, their reaction I don't think is amazingly useful unless they're extremely wounded, but effectively the Ogre base damage is so high that it's really unlikely that you're going to use it because you're always going to be doing more damage out of Ogres just swinging with their clubs. Going into order, there's a few interesting damaging reactions here. So we've got Thunderstrike Stormcast, they've got Thunderous Departure, so very much like Gobapalooza, if they die, they can react go to space and explode for a bunch of damage. So not really something you want to build around. Also, Stormcast are very expensive, so it's not really, you can't really spam 
Stormcast, for example. Gladiatorial, so gladiatorial display, a fighter can make the reaction after they're targeted, but before hit rolls are made, this is the same gladiatorial display as we've seen before. So it has all of the same caveats as the previous one. Uh, return fire from grey water fastness. We've, it's shared by Cities of Sigma and Caradron Overlords. Now it's already seen good use at the Nova Open very early in this edition's lifetime. And we've all seen how we can build lists around return fire for just a lot of cheap Caradron Overlords fighters. So that's definitely something that we want to watch and we want to keep an eye on going forward. Vengeful Spites. It's the Vengeful Spites is the same as a Slanesh reaction. So if your opponent hits, you're going to do damage back to them. If they crit, you're going to do more damage. Like I said before, with Slanesh, it has the same problems. You're not really going to build an entire warband around that. Lastly, the main the, the main reason we're all here is counter. So just a quick reminder on what counter does. A fighter can make this reaction after they're targeted by a melee attack action, but before the hit rolls are made. For each hit roll that misses, you allocate one point of damage, and if you crit, you do two points of damage. Now, Counter gets better the more toughness you have, but also gets better with the more attacks your opponent is hitting with. I've given a bunch of different fighters which might be good with counter. The average DPA is assuming that you'll be facing toughness 3 25% of the time, toughness 4 50% of the time, and toughness 5 25% of the time. It's worth noting that Blood Reavers, the Clear Blood, and the Pit Fighter are strength 4 already, and the Witch Elves have extra attacks at strength 3. So what we're doing here is we're looking at how much damage these fighters are going to be doing versus the amount of damage that their reaction will be doing. Either Corn's Dew, Vicious Repost, Gladiator Display, etc. And this is assuming that your Av fighter with three attacks at strength four doing two four damage is swinging at them. So in essence, anything that's going to do two damage per reaction is going to... This is per reaction, per attack, um, is going to be better than counter anyway. Now, obviously, the math is going to change depending on your opponent's stats. So, for example, if you're a fighter being hit by a Nighthaunt Dread Scythe with five attacks, winning on fives, you're going to see a lot of mileage out of Corn's Dew and Vicious Repost because your opponent is going to be missing more often, so you'll be doing more damage back. Now, I've got... A uh, big old list here. You can you can check out this list. This is a bunch of ta uh, chaff units. So I've said that chaff units are going to be 70 points or less. Some people say 60 points. Some people say 50 points. It's really up to your up to your preference and what you're doing with your list building. But I'm saying here 70 points or less with toughness four or more to get good use out of counter. And this is sorted by damage per point. The arrowed fighters, so the Mortec Guard with blade, Mortec Guard with spear, Volkite Berserkers, and Longbeards. They're all toughness five, which is pretty good and they're all fairly cheap as well which is nice but they are going to need extra support early game because they're only movement three so they want to they want that support to get to where they're going to go and to really entrench themselves so that they can get the best use of their opponents running into them and then doing things fire slayers also have their own reaction gathered heroes which is a free move which will allow you to get places a, bit, a little bit easier, so that is pretty good for the Volkite Berserkers, and they get an extra 3-inch movement on a double, so I think Fire Slayers might be, might be a good shout if you wanted to try counter in its own in, in its own right. We're talking about Fire Slayers, and we're probably talking about Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Some good options for counter specifically are the Gloom Spike Git Stabber, we got Skeletons, and we got the Cruel Boy Stab Grot, just because it's so cheap, and it's got Toughness 4. And we can see them at the top here, it's just a lot of Mortec Guard, Grave Guard with Blade and Shield, just because they're so cheap by themselves. But if you're taking Grave Guard, you're really going to be taking Great Weapon Grave Guard. Plate Bearers are fairly good for this. They got a bunch of wounds, they got good toughness, and they're only 50 points. And then you have some some interesting things like Bleak Swords, for example, Witch Elves with Dagger and Shield, Free Guild Guard with Sword and Shield. You're gonna you're gonna see a lot of fighter with shield on this list because they're cheap and they get the toughness for. Now going into some list ideas, I've got a couple couple of things here. These are these are tried lists that 
have worked in the past and that should continue to work going forward. The first list, which is Ossiok Bone Reaper Counter Control, I went 2-1 and one at Warhammer World with this just last week. I came third overall, so it was pretty good. The core is 4 Mortec Guard and the Hecatos to move into objectives. Now, that will enable me to use Deathly Prowess or Counter to do all the work for them effectively. So we're either going to be doing 5 damage back because they've got Toughness 5, maybe our opponent's going to miss, or they're going to do a bunch of little damage due to due to Counter itself. And it's only 325 points for the 5 fighters. The Sons of Velmorn, so King Morlax, Sir Jedrin, Helmar, and Bane, are there for utility and for sticking power with the Jedrin-Morlax combo to just not die <laughs> effectively and he also has resurrection of his two grave guard that come with the dreadblade harrow is there specifically for fast treasure and objective grabbing so but if you wanted to go pure bone reapers you can replace the sons of velmorn and the dreadblade with maybe a pair of stalkers or a morgast for power and speed or maybe even something like a soul mason for support like i said i ran this to good effect last week two wins one loss and third place overall at warhammer world i will go over my games in another video but the overall the plan to counter my way to victory worked pretty well i think the majority of my opposing warbands were either strength three or four so they were all wounding me on fives and at times the prospect of a counter stopped my opponent from attacking in favor of disengaging from the Mortec Guard instead, because they would likely end up killing themselves when, when they invariably missed. It is important to note that when I was playing against Soulblight Grave Lords, I had to actively not use counter in order to kill Grave Guards. The reason for that is when the Grave Guards would have died, their heroes would have been able to resurrect them, full wounds, and that's not something I wanted, so I really had to wait until those heroes activated to make sure that they wouldn't just get more free Grave Guard back. So that's something something to keep in mind during that matchup. The Korn's due list is actually what went three and one last month at Warhammer World, another event. This one was four games, it was 32 players, if I remember. You can see it, there are a lot of Blood Reavers. Now, Blood Reavers are five inch move fighters, which is pretty good. They got 10 wounds, so they're unlikely to die in the first attack. I'm not saying this is how the, the pilot of this list did it himself, but you could use Korn's Dew, which can be used on anything that they'd be wounding on a 5, which would be most fighters in the game, to do more damage than a normal 1-3 damage profile, especially on opponents with 4 or more attacks. So as a reminder, Korn's Dew does 2 damage for every miss, but a plus 1 crit damage. It's really a shame, I think, that they didn't give Blood Reavers a shield option, because I think that they would actually do really well in this in this kind of a list with shields, because then they'd go up to Toughness 4, and Korn's you would effectively be procking 50% of the time against the majority of the field, uh, which is actually pretty good. They've got the numbers to swarm around objectives, and they've got the Skull Hunter with its large amount of wounds, toughness, and offensive profile to act as your main hammer, and the Slaughter Priest to be pulling enemy fighters out of position uh, with its 8-inch Bloodbind double. Some other options might be a Fomeroid Crusher, maybe, or a Mind Stealer in that 260-point Skull Hunter slot. Or you could go all in for something like a Varangard at 285, and you could downgrade the Bloodmaster to a cheaper fighter in order to do that. But, I mean, it's not something that needs to be done, if you ask me. Overall, this was it, it, this list was very effective, and it showed it in, in its results. I've got a couple of honorable mentions here, so this is just me messing around with the numbers, seeing what you could put in, just based around the reactions that you might want to do i think we, so let's start with splintered fang we're going to use a true blood as it's our only hero choice at 170 points and we're going to use venom bloods with whips two of them 105 because they have very solid stats for those 105 points that you're spending and they've got the three inch range on those whips which is very valuable for the rest of the warband we're going to be looking at clear bloods with shields so as a reminder vicious repost causes hits of one or two to deal damage back to the attacker so if your opponent is hitting you with strength three and wounding you on fives you want to be using counter because it's got more going for it um, but if your opponent is hitting you on threes or fours then there's a good likelihood they're going to splat you anyway so using vicious repost trying to make your opponent really think about what they're doing might be a good idea there you can see it that we're already running at eight fighters but we've got a 295 point headway to keep on spending up to your 1000 points so there is point spare in there for you to do something like again i keep mentioning the varangard just because it's really good for a really fast hard hitting and durable unit to kind of do the damage while your clear bloods get into position and they're they're able to defend effectively 
Now, Fire Slayers, I've already mentioned, the Volkite Berserkers, they all have Toughness 5, which is great. They do have Movement 3, but that can be mit mitigated, as I'm going to speak about in a, in a moment. They're also only at 65 points, which is really, really good. So... To mitigate their movement three, they've got Relentless Zeal. So on a double, it's effectively plus three inch move, which is very good. Not that you need it with Toughness five, but you can always go the Icon of Grimnir for plus one toughness to go up to Toughness six if there's any Strength five things that are wounding you on fours. We're going to start with a core here of Volkite Berserkers with weapons and shields. They're very much like Grave Guard with Toughness five and poor attacks, but for a little over 500 points, you can take six of them and a Doom Seeker, which will leave you plenty of points left over for faster allies. The idea being that these allies will get in place and hit key targets on turns one and two, whilst the Berserkers get into position on objectives where they can proceed to be very hard to shift. Because with their toughness five, a good amount of wounds, anything running into them will really have a hard time moving that many Volkite Berserkers off of objectives. And lastly, I'd like to mention the Tarantulas Brood and their Spiders. Now, Spider Swarm used to be one of the big power lists of the last edition, and they did get a massive tone down in the current rules, so you would think that they're bad, and they are pretty bad, but, but they're only 50 points. So they're a very cheap chaff unit, and they have the defensive blade reaction, which is exactly the same as Splintered Fang's Vicious Riposte. So ones and twos to hit them will do two damage back. Now, because this doesn't rely on them having any kind of toughness, it's something that you can really lean into. That two damage is better than your basic attack. I think it's one to hit and twos on crits. And on top of that, they get support in faction from Scuttling Symbiosis for a bonus move or an additional bonus attack. Now, this means they don't need to waste actions to get to where they need to be, which means that you can use Scuttling Symbiosis to go places and then go on to repost, which might be might be something interesting. Um, they also have a resurrect on a triple, which allows you to bring spiders back after they died. So, but you know, sure, they've only got six wounds, but I think with enough swarms, the damage does really start to rack up. You can take like five spider swarms for two hundred and fifty points, which is which is pretty good if we if we're going for a swarm list. Um, but anyway, that's that's it from me for today. Like I said. Playing reaction control, it was it, it was pretty interesting for me. I, I really did it just to see if it would work. I'd heard the term being banded around elsewhere, and I thought, you know what, let's give it a go. I did it with Ossiak Bone Reapers. The tournament report is coming soon, probably at some point next week. But yeah, I, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I had people run into me and essentially kill themselves to death by hitting themselves with counter. I had people run away from my Bone Reapers because they would be killing themselves, so they just left. And yeah, it was, it was very interesting games of Warcry that I had. But anyway, that's it. That's it from me. So if you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. And uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments what you think about this, what kind of crazy list ideas you might have, and anything about counter or reactions or anything along those lines that you might... You, you might want to mention we, we, we can have a good talk about it but anyway thank you for watching and i will see you next time